Terrific. Well, everyone, I'd love to introduce you to Lax Ganapathy from Unicus Research. She is a short specialist. Not that she's short, but she's great at shorting stocks. And the reason we have her on this week is because one of the companies that she recommended shorting a few weeks ago is heading for zero. Shorting a stock to bankruptcy is one of those ultra difficult scalps that every short seller wants to claim. And so, you know, bad news for this company, but Lax, congratulations on the phenomenal call. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, it's uh, shorting any stocks to zero is is uh, <laughs> very challenging. It, and... it is. Yeah. So we're talking about Fisker, ticker FSR. Um, Lax, when did you first recommend shorting it? And what did you see that caused concern? Well, you know, back in 2020, when SPACs are a big deal, we, um, all the company like Fisker, Faraday, Future, all became public. So it's around 2021, uh, if my memory serves right, we recommended Fisker. Um, this is uh, Henry F Henrik Fisker's uh, second rodeo in trying to manage an EV company. Um, his first one filed for bankruptcy, now, this is a second one on its way to bankruptcy. Got it. So I'm looking right now, stock price in 2021 was around the $15, $20 range. Uh, yes. And then where is it? That's barely above zero right now, right? Yes. It's right now about um, 15 cents. <laughs> well, so that's uh, an incredible return. What What went wrong at Fisker and what did you see? a couple of years ago that enabled you to say, wait a minute, this thing is a disaster. It's a zero. Um, Gary, the challenging thing is just not limited to Fisker. It's about the entire EV sector, right? So EV sector has uh, electric vehicle companies have a huge problem. Uh, they have scalability issues, they have reliability issues, and they have cash issues, right? So. Fisker has scalability and reliability issues. And we started to see a pattern in all of the EV companies, specifically for Fisker. Um, Henrik Fisker has a track record with EV. That's a story for another day. Um, Fisker has a reliability issues. It's core, it has a software issues. There is a lawsuit going on where the car stops in the middle of the road almost causing a life of its clients. So that's a huge issue. Okay. Um, and Lex, I know one of the things you've written about before, because I'm on your email list, I read your weekly piece every week, but you wrote something, I want to say it's two months ago, about the danger of buying an electric vehicle where the manufacturer is going to go out of business because without software updates, you own a very expensive piece of furniture. That is true. <laughs> and that no one addresses that issue because everybody thinks, okay, we have a car, we are saving the, we have an EV car, we are saving an environment. Uh, no, you're not saving an environment. That is number one. Number two, when the company goes bankrupt, no one has a clue. So the company, if it goes bankrupt, it has to uh, make a deal with another company or make sure its software is open source so its consumers can continue using it. So that's the issue. Got it. All right. Uh, last question for you, Lex. One of the things that you've talked about and written about at length, and I know you've been early on this topic, you've been talking about it for years. There is the perception you just talked about that EVs are great for the environment. If you get rid of your internal combustion engine car and buy an EV, you're going to save the world. I know you're not a fan of that thinking, can and, and it's a complicated topic, but just give us the outline of what some of your environmental concerns are. Speaking just to the people who, who want a better environment, why do you think EVs are not a good solution? Because EVs manufacturing process is not kosher. So those are not environmentally friendly. Um, EV 
because the battery is not environmentally friendly. And I will get back to you on the statistics, but for an EV to be environmentally friendly, it has to take a certain amount of mileage and years for an EV to be considered environmentally friendly. Uh, so to, to in a nutshell, EVs are expensive. They are not reliable. Um, they are liability and safety issues for the consumers. They are, um, in a nutshell, EV is a sustainability dynamics is an expensive and emotional trap for investors, manufacturers, the environment, and the consumers. It's like trying to sell a product because if you don't buy it, you, you're harming the environment. So it's like a guilt driven manufacturing uh, marketing gimmick. I, I love the way you describe it as an emotional trap, especially given the fact that they advertise these vehicles as zero emission vehicles, but the batteries require hundreds of pounds of lithium. Hey, Lax, any idea what fuel they use to mine lithium? Um, not electric. It's, it's diesel. Uh... It's enormous amounts of diesel fuel. Um, the problem with that mentality is after the fact, the lithium batteries are going to waste. There are only two companies, as far as I know, I am not researching currently on that. There are only two companies in the world that are recycling the lithium batteries. So they have to dismantle them and take all the uh, minerals from it to reuse them. And it's a very complicated and an expensive process. No one has figured that out. All right, terrific. Gary, well, Gary yeah, if you don't mind, before we uh, let Lax go, actually, sure. I have one follow-up question um, that I know, and I know my, uh, my circle will be interested in. Uh, if any, right, what, is this, what does this do for obviously the big dog in the space? Tesla, does it mean anything is it absolutely not corollary in any way but just curious if there is anything um that we can take from what happened with fisker is it something completely mismanagement just curious um on that side uh with respect to tesla um we consider that as a cult stock um so we haven't recommended it as a long or a short um mm -hmm. To be completely candid after researching the entire ev sector for three four years I have no clue how Elon is making this scalable and where the money is coming from. Um, that is a separate discussion because he is burning cash and it, he is like trying to recycle one thing into another thing. No clue, but it's, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's still a going concern. Thanks, All right. Lex. Well, Lex, thanks so much for getting both of us kicked off of Twitter or X as it's called now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so for people who are interested in an alternative view of alternative vehicles, Lex Ganapathy from Unicus Research. Lex, we'll put a link to um, to your uh, Twitter or X account in the um, in the description here. So Thank people you. who are looking for you can find you and uh, and sign up. I would suggest people sign up for Lax's weekly newsletter. Like I said, I read it every weekend. Thank Definitely. you. And thank Thanks, you so Lax. much, Gary. Thanks, Rob, for having me. All right. Of course. See you soon, Lax. Anytime. See you soon. Bye. So long.